What are those numbers on your arm? Oh, that's uh, the date my dad died. He was a fireman. Died in a fire 17 years ago. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Don't be, it's fine. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not your dad. <laughs> How did you become familiar with Pete Davidson? Like, did you see him doing stand-up? And then what made you go, you know, we should really do something together? You know, I was working on Trainwreck with Amy Schumer, and we were about to go into production, and I said, you know, who should I know? What, what you know, comedians should I know that I don't know about? And she started telling me about a bunch of people, but the first person she mentioned was Pete. She said, there's this 20-year-old guy. He's so funny. I love him. And we went online on YouTube and we just watched clips of him doing stand up and he was fantastic. And we, we gave him a cameo, not because uh, you know, he was so perfect for this moment. We literally just wanted to put him in the movie because we thought he was going to be a giant star and it would be funny one day that he had one line in train wreck. Uh, like Richard Dreyfus is in the graduate. Uh, we wanted to plant our flag. Like we do. Pete is very funny. Um, but there's sometimes when I wonder, like, it, would my 55 year old aunt think he's funny? Do you know what I mean? Like, he has <laughs> yes. like a very like nihilist sense of humor. Well, I always understood, you know, what he was talking about when he told me his story and and talked about his pain and what's been hard to heal from. I felt like that would be universal. Obviously, he's been through a lot. His father was a, a firefighter who died on 9/11, and that's a very specific type of tragedy that is difficult because it's always present. People talk about it all the time. People want to talk to him about it all the time. And for most people, you know, when you have a tragedy like that, you're allowed to heal and then move on. It isn't constantly re-imprinted on you all the time. And I, I felt like I related, you know, I lost my mom in 2008 and I thought that everyone has a terrible loss that they're trying to get over. And even though uh, his story is, is very unique to him, that type of grief is universal to everybody. And I thought everyone would relate to it. Maybe help Ray get his kids to school. Kelly, do you know him? He's a new friend. You okay? You know, you could tell me. I'm okay. Oh, I trained her in the car. She's not going to break. So I see a picture of Gary Shandling behind you. You mentioned Gary yeah. Shandling's Peabody. There has been a lot of sadness in the world, especially this week, recently. Um, and I know that you've gone through sadness in recent years with, with your friend Gary, with you mentioned the death of your mom. Um, is there a way to use humor to work through sadness or is that kind of a fool's errand? Well, I, I definitely think it's you know one of the tools that people use to get through things. I know that for Pete, having a dark sense of humor was a way of demystifying all of it. It's a way of not just pushing it down and having it there. It's a way of letting letting it out and, and uh, having some light on it. So I definitely think it's very helpful to get to the place where you can laugh and look at things from, from different angles. And that's part of what our movie's about, because even though it, it is about sudden trauma and grief. It is it's still a comedy that is as funny as any of the other movies I've done, but yet it's very, you know, authentic and, and real. Something I was talking to Patton Oswalt about recently was like whether or not comedy can change minds. And he was sort of saying like, you know, maybe you're not going to come out of it 150% different, but like, it's like a little Easter egg that's like there in your head and everything you see that, you know, it moves you towards a different place. It's um, funny because we were talking about this this morning about how uh, gay marriage happened so much faster because of shows like Will and Grace and Modern Family. And I do think sometimes comedy helps people uh, open up to new ideas. And I feel like young people especially might be raised on something like Modern Family or, you know, uh, the Daily Show or South Park, and they're exposed to so much comedy which mocks prejudice. And so they may not get the habits or the bad ideas that other people get because the whole culture isn't tolerating those ideas. What have you read or listened to or watched or whatever in the past couple of months that you really loved, like that you've been telling people about? I really enjoyed the Netflix documentary how to fix a drug war that Aaron Lee Carr made. 
I thought that was fantastic. I'm a big documentary fan. So, I, I, you know, the Michael Jordan and the Lance Armstrong documentaries I watched. I think everybody should watch uh, the documentary On the Record. Um, uh, that is on HBO Max and is about you know, the accusations against Russell Simmons. Mm -hmm. uh, I also think it's important to watch the Jeffrey Epstein documentary uh, on Netflix. And in terms of scripted uh, shows, you know, I, I'm, I'm just catching up on a lot of shows I didn't finish because sometimes my wife will move faster through them. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be watching two seasons together and then we'll be two into episode to two episodes into season three. And then suddenly I'll come home and Leslie finished it. <laughs> and then I, then I'm like, I never finished the crown because you finished it without me. And so uh, there's a few of those that I need to finish like the crown and uh, Hollywood, which my daughter Maude Apatow is in, which we really enjoy on Netflix. <laughs> I just feel like everybody's always disappointed in me and I never live up to anybody's expectations. Hey, thanks for listening to all this. You're one of the few people who treat me, you know, like a person. You're welcome.